Oh, by the way, I still got to say this is kind of weird that I'm sitting here <laughs> being interviewed on Veal Buzz Weekly. Oh my God, do I get a mug? Do I finally get a mug? You might get a mug. And let me just say, you did not know these questions. I'm just throwing these. At yeah, you, she so. she put these things together, but this is really mm -hmm. good. I uh, treat you the same. Can you ask the question again? Yes, pretty. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Veal Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now. Prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Hey, everybody. Chuck and Stacey here with VO Buzz Weekly. Okay, you guys. I am really excited about the shows that we're doing. These next two episodes are ones I've been wanting to do for quite some time. And I finally got my very VIP guests to agree to it. We're talking today about demos. And besides being my favorite person in the entire world, he is also a gifted award-winning producer director of Demos That Rock. He is Chuck Duran. We are getting buzzed. Come with us. <laughs> Hi, Chuck. I miss you over here, but this way I get I to say, look at you. I gotta say, this is like the weirdest thing ever, <laughs> I know, right? isn't it? And, yeah, because we've been wanting to do this episode or asked to do this episode- A long time. For like, years and uh and we never have and i think that now more than ever everybody has so many demo questions and all everybody's always asking yes. about the process over here at demos yes. at rock so we're so done. i put him in the hot seat feeling steamy over there are you? i'm a little nervous i have to say <laughs> Okay, well, here's the good news. Yeah. None of these are trick questions. True. I'm pretty sure you know the answer, so buzz in when you uh, get it. Okay, mm. so you've gotten a lot of questions over the years, and then when we started the show, we get lots of questions from people. So we've kind of taken a medley of all of those things, and plus some of my own. Are mm -hmm. you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm I'll be ready. gentle. All right, so <laughs> you, I've heard you talk about treating voiceover like a business versus a hobby. Can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, this is a big one. Uh, and and it's really quite simple, uh, but it, it's basically a business rule in general. And, you know, the, the, the second half of the voice of your voiceover business is that it is a business. That's why they call it the voiceover business. Um, and if you treat any business like a hobby, it's going to cost you money. Uh, it, it rarely, hobbies rarely ever pay you money. But if you treat this business like a business, it will pay you or it can pay you like no other business because there are just so many great opportunities, but you just have to, have to um, work the business side of the business. It's not all about being an actor. And isn't it also about managing your effort and your expectation? Absolutely. I mean, if you're putting in, you know, one hour a week towards the business side of your business, how much do you want to see, what, what kind of return on yeah. investment do you want to see on that one hour a week? Yeah. You know, but if you're putting in uh, daily activity towards your business, then all of a sudden your chances of getting more back, it's like you're planting seeds. The more seeds you plant, the better chances yes. of, of the them. harvest will there be you abundant. Go. Yes. Exactly. So I'm yes. always of that mind that if you're not in your booth and you're actually voicing or doing auditions or sending auditions in or editing or doing something that is the you know the, the actor part of what you do as a voice actor, then you should be doing some other part of your business. Right. Coaching, doing workout groups. Going well, yeah. To I mean, and yeah. we're going to probably get into yes, more of are. that. But we absolutely. are. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Well, no, because a lot of people say, oh, Stacey, you, you bake and cook so well. You should have a restaurant. You should have a bakery. I have family in the food business, mm -hmm. so I know what that takes. So so I know I don't want to do that because I'm not going to be able to put all that in it. And I think it, it's the same with voiceover. Yeah. If you see and emulate people that are, oh, they're doing it, but you don't see necessarily the effort yeah. because they make it look like it's Absolutely. easy. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and time and time again, you see that. And, and, and by the way, this conversation, I just want to be really clear on a few things. Number one, we're not going to be putting anybody down as to how they do something or not do anything. No. These are just questions that we've gotten through the years that need to be answered. And these are my opinion and Stacy's opinions mm -hmm. uh, because there are more than one 
r correct answers to more than one way to peel a banana. <laughs> there you go. And so, so, so <laughs> we hope that you can just understand that that if I say something maybe a little derogatory towards something, that it's not an attack. It's just the way that I feel. And I also have to say, I'm very, very passionate about what you guys do to actually have success. Yes. Yes. So most people ask, how do I know when I'm ready to make a demo? What I would like to ask you is, how do you know, because you meet with thousands of people, how do you know when someone is not ready to make a demo? Because you will not make a demo with someone unless they're ready. Absolutely. So what is it that you go, mm, you're not ready? What makes you say um, Well, I mean, first of all, I think that certain people may be ready for a demo at certain stages of the business. You don't go from knowing nothing and being a beginner in voiceover to being a pro in a week, right? That doesn't happen. So I don't think that that necessarily means that once you get to the point to where, yeah, you're new, but you've taken, you know, some good classes, you have some good skill under your hat and, and maybe you're not at a pro, pro, pro level, but you're getting to the point where you're actually really good. You know, and there's a demo for that. You don't have to wait till you're like, you know, Joe Cipriano or Scott Rummel or any of the top people that are at the, the, the top of their, their game to actually do a demo. Um, but you should be ready. Whatever stage you're at, you should be ready for a demo at that stage. And I would always say that my, my goal is always to produce something that is going to get you something. You do not right, want right. So, so, so criteria wise, if someone's saying, "I want to blast into the major market," I want to get a major market representation or a really kick in regional representation, and they come to you, what what stands out? What specific criteria do you say? Okay, sounds like you're reading, or what is it that sticks out to you? Their acting chops that makes you say, "You're not ready for you." This may be <laughs> sound pretty obvious, but. What I listen for, first of all, I never work with anybody unless I hear them actually doing what it is they do. And if they don't have some sort of a demo or some kind of recording that they did in a class of some sort that they can send me, I will send them some scripts and have them read a few things and send back to me. What I'm looking for is the fact that they can be a voice actor, not a voice reader. Um, and so many people will send back something that sounds like they're kind of reading or even worse than reading is they're maybe acting, but they're acting like the guy or the gal that's <laughs> supposed to be a voice actor. So, so you can, you can't even see them or hear them yeah. themselves, who they are, their authentic self anywhere in that recording because they're so like, Oh, okay. So now I'm going to be oh, a I'm voice actor. actor. Now. Yeah, yes. So I'm going to perform. And unfortunately, you know, maybe 20 years ago, that was actually good. But today they want raw, they want real, they want authentic. So I need to hear you being you, having normal conversations uh, with the script. Yes, yes. And if I, if I don't hear that, then, then it's, it's, you're not quite ready yet. Right, so let's walk through the process of what happens after someone contacts you through Demos That Rock. I should know this, right? Right. <laughs> Step one. I'm still a little bit nervous. I'm being interviewed on my own <laughs> freaking show. This is crazy. Um, so somebody first initially contacts me, typically by either phone or email. Yeah. Email um, is preferred. Email is preferred. And if you do call, it'll say, for a faster response, <laughs> please absolutely. email. Absolutely. Because I'm always in a session yes. or working with somebody. So if you email me, I'm going to get those But way, it is. Way but it, I think it is a good... Indicator of can you follow direction? Absolutely. Please don't leave me a message. You email me, me, and then you leave a ten minute message. <laughs> Excuse me, you're not listening. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, anyway, so they email so you. So they email me, and uh, and you know hopefully they've given me uh, you know some insight as to what they're looking for, what mm -hmm. type of demo, um, and what their needs are. Um, I will respond typically really really quickly with uh, a set of questions. And these questions are really, really important. Um, these questions are there for you to feel comfortable with how I work and my process um, of how we do things. Um, and they're good for me to, to evaluate 
what it is that you need, how I can best help you, um, and, and, and where we need to start. Mm -hmm. Because obviously everybody is, is at a different level. You might be a beginner, you know, starting from nowhere. You might be right in the middle somewhere. Uh, maybe you're updating a demo. Maybe you're a pro that's looking to take things to that next level. Yeah. Um, so these questions will address all of that. So we have some questions, then you respond back. If everything's a go, we'll set up a Skype meeting if you're from out of town. Right, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and if you're in town here in Los Angeles, we'll set up a face-to-face -face meeting. I love those. Yes, uh, we get to know each other a little bit. I have what I call a profile sheet. Oh, and it's a and I've mm -hmm. had this profile sheet for over twenty years. So I've profiled <laughs> hundreds and hundreds, thousands. Of people. The profile. So these questions yes. are very, very strategically asked so that I can get to know you in a very, very, very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And but they're not just questions about you, but questions about where what, what it is that you want to get. Here's what I always say, man, is that nobody comes here to demos at rock to just get a demo. That is not the goal. Something has to happen. You want something to happen after you have that demo, whether it's an agent or work or to be able to promote that demo to casting and, and, and buyers or all those different things, right? And those are the, the final goal. So I know this. So I need, we work backwards, right? Yes. And this allows us to work backwards. I so love that, backwards thinking. So where can, do you want to get? And now what steps to get you from where you are? That's exactly it's it. fantastic. And so that's what we do. Yeah. So once we have that meeting, we get very, very specific. We talk about um, the, the demographic that we want that demo to showcase, which is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Our entire world revolves around demographic um, and uh, age demographic, to be uh, more direct there. Um, and it's really, really important. The other thing is uh, the industry. The industry demands certain things, and that's what it needs. And if you can't meet what the industry needs, then you don't represent value. And if you don't represent value, then your demo is worthless. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, that's with any product that's for sale up there. You know, you are a product and you are for sale. So we really, really get down to the nitty grids and really map out that voiceover demo and what we want it to do and yeah. how we want people to perceive you when they listen to that demo. Yeah. Okay? Then you go home. And then there's a very important process that happens, and that is that this little girl right here, which is, <laughs> she's she's the secret weapon, I have to say, <laughs> um, gets to work. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Okay. <laughs> gets to work on putting together uh, personalized custom scripts to whatever vibes that we're going for. Number one, we are producing real commercials, mm -hmm. not commercials that could be real, that, you know, might be real. We're not using fictitious names or products. <laughs> and we want to make sure that those spots are branded and read, performed in the styles that are popular right now. Yeah. Again, that's what's going to add value. Stacy does an amazing job writing all the scripts for our clients, um, whether it's commercials, promos, all that stuff, in-show narration, you name it. Um, and once those scripts are done, they're sent to the uh, uh, to the client, mm -hmm. you guys. And uh, we already have a record date that's been set since from our first meeting, yeah. so we know when that's going to happen. If there's any prepping that you need to do, then you will have instructions to do so even from our very, very first meeting, which is very, very important. I always tell people, man, you could be a professional fighter, a champion, but if you ever get into a ring for a new, a new event, a new fight, without preparing for that fight, you are going to lose. And this demo is the fight. So yeah. we need to prepare you to come in, be confident, and kick butt Yes. So that that tool can be so what it you needs refer to, be. to legit coaches that you trust that you know are going to tell the truth, tell the truth, not send them back until they're ready. Absolutely. Um, and and there have been times when someone has a demo record set right, and maybe they're not quite there, so they need to push the record because no one's being done any favors. Because why? Because if you can't get that performance out of a talent in the booth. If we can't do that within a couple takes, that's a problem, right? It's because a huge in the problem. real world, you don't get a half an hour. 
Well, and, and hold on, I'm yeah. gonna add to that real quick because there have been a few times when people have come, they've been prepped, um, and we come, session day comes, they're here, we're in the booth, we're going, and all of a sudden, you know, we're 20 minutes into our first spot and we've done, you know, 20 takes and we're nowhere near where we should be. And at that point, I will stop the session mm -hmm. because there, I, I, I'm not here to steal people's money. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to do that, right? And I would much rather we stop the session, you come out, we have a little talk, you go prepare a little bit more, then come back, you know, a few weeks later and come in and kick butt. Because when you leave here, I want you to leave here saying like, man, what an incredible experience that was. I am so psyched. I am pumped. Yes. That's how you should feel. Because as we know, the microphone picks up your hair growing. So if you don't have that confidence and that belief. We're going to record that. Yes. And, and that's not what you want. That. <laughs> That's not what you want out there for all time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's no shame in that because, again, I think, you know, this is one step in your yeah. process, right? And so you want to put your best work out there where yeah. you are at that point in time, right? Absolutely. So, we, yeah, that tool needs to be great. By the way, yeah. there's a saying that says a bad demo is worse than no demo. Mm. So, yeah. This is why this is important. This little conversation is important because. Having a just a demo is not necessarily a good thing if it's a bad one because that people will remember that. Yes. People remember two things, ladies and gentlemen. They remember really, really great and really, really bad. Something that's good, it's invisible. They mm -hmm. don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And we get this asked a lot. I know I have gotten auditions because of my demo. I've gotten jobs because of my demo. And people have asked you, Oh, come on, the demo. Do you really get jobs from demos? Is oh my right? gosh. I have so many stories of people booking from, from their demos. And listen, it maybe not just booking from my demos, okay? I'm not saying that I'm like the god of demos or anything like that. I am. But can you book from a really great produced demo? Something that's really, really done correctly. Absolutely. Yes. I get I've gotten hundreds of emails and I get these by the way weekly of people that are out there and these are new people uh that are excited like oh my gosh and all of a sudden uh hey Chuck you're not gonna believe what just happened mm -hmm. um and I'm like well actually I probably I will but what happened <laughs> oh my god well I got my agent and then a week spin and I a client heard my demo and they saw heard this one spot on the demo and so that's what they wanted me to do and so I booked the spot without even auditioning for it because they loved yeah. a read on a certain spot on my demo that happens yeah. all the time yeah. so so what are some of the key elements of a great demo oh where do we want to start, ladies and gentlemen? For you, because that's what you produce. And listen, I mean, I'm not being paid. This is not paid advertisement. Um, you <laughs> helped me start my career. You've yeah. helped thousands of people pay for their homes and their kids and their cars and their pets. And so this is not, you know, me just going, oh, you're so great. It's yeah. real. Yeah. These are real testimonials. Yeah. Um, so what for you, when you produce a demo and you say, okay, this is, a demos that rock endorse great demo. What are those some of those elements that are essential? Basically, because you know the market, you know the buyers, you know yeah. the agents. Well, and you, and you just said it. So the crucial elements of a great demo, that's something that can really, really help you book um, and get an agent and get work from that actual tool, is number one, you have to represent value, meaning that the content of that demo has to be really, really, really current. Not just from a product perspective, an industry perspective, right? But also from the perspective of style, stylistically, mm -hmm. how you are approaching these reads. Because as we all know, just like clothing goes in and out of style, certain reads, styles of reads, go in and out of, in and, in and out of style. And if you don't know what those are, then you don't know your industry. If mm -hmm. you don't know your industry, then good things yeah. are not going to happen. Yeah. But if you know your industry, then you have a better chance of really, really honing into the things that are really, really popular. 
I study the industry. I have to know what is really, really popular. That's something that I lend mm -hmm. to the people that come to see me and give them to make give them a little bit more of a of a shot, right? Right. Uh, so number one, and then the other thing is that we need to incorporate you, who you are, because I tell people so many times that the only thing that's missing here is you. Man, you got great chops. You're great acting. You've had every class in the world with with great, great coaches. And I hear you acting. And unfortunately, that is not what makes a great actor. What makes a great actor is when you don't know that they're acting. Yeah. Which is why an actor, before he goes to film something, he goes home and he memorizes the script so that they can internalize those words that they didn't write but now verbalize them as their own. Right, right. And in voiceover, it's it's much harder because you don't get to go home and internalize these scripts most of the time. You have to read them, internalize them, and spit them out as your own instantly, which is difficult to do. Yeah. But that's where people lose themselves. Like, well, how am I supposed to be me and get this across? You know what I mean? And that's hard, but we need to incorporate you, right. the essence of who you are, what's happening right out there right now with product service and products and services, as well as stylistically speaking. Yeah. And yeah. then we have three crucial elements right there. Yeah. Well, and also I want to add, which is something that I think is really important, whether you do the demo or not, um, if people go with somebody else, that's fine. But everything that you use, the effects, the music, they're licensed. And I think that's really important because we know there's people that have had their demos pulled off because someone said, hey, wait a second, you're using my stuff. So you need to make sure. Yeah. I mean, you're meticulous about that, I about am. everything that you use. People can use <clears throat> yeah. how they want, where they want. Absolutely. We use licensed music um, and sound effects because that is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be stealing music off of YouTube. And, 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 and right. in fact, I know people that have been fined 2,500 bucks a pop yes. for, for infringement, copyright infringement. Yes. We don't want any of that. So yes, all our stuff is 100% licensed and it's really, really modern and up to date in all genres of music. That's the only way to produce something that's right. real. Listen, when McDonald's does a new commercial, when Chevy does a new commercial, when anybody that's real does a new commercial, this is what they use. They don't get to use free music from YouTube. They pay. They license great music. And that's what right. we do. And, and I have to say, one of the things, one of the many things that I think you are so great at, and we'll talk about later, you know, with your music background, but your ability, and I heard this when I was first in LA and submitting my demos of yours to get representation. You have this beautiful way of making the production current, making the production pop without overshadowing the talent. Yeah. And I think sometimes some demos are the production is the star, yeah. not the talent. And I think that that's really one of, one of the many things I think really make your demos stand out. They're very distinctive yeah. because you have sauce that nobody can put in there. Um, and you also know how to showcase and, and elevate the voice actor to be the star of the demo. So well, thank you, Stacey. That's High five on that, dude. Boom. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it's important. I mean, you know, let's say you go and see, you know, your friend who's an actor doing a play at a playhouse. It's not just going to be them standing in a room acting, right? They're, they're, there's a set. There's lights. There are things that help what it is that they're doing in that story, uh, uh, so that you can you can hear and feel the story. You can get emotion mm -hmm. out of what's happening, and 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 that's why movies have music. That's why it's so important to produce something not to make the product right. Because the one thing that should shine above and beyond everything else is you, yeah. your sound, your God given signature sound that nobody can take away from you. And in fact, that's something that you can't buy. Yeah. Right is your sound, um, uh, and, and and your skill, but you want to showcase that in a way that an agent, a buyer, a casting director can hear it and go like, ooh, okay, because they can hear. Listen, you, you could have the best music, the best <laughs> production yeah. on the best, and if you're not really in key with, you know, everything yeah. else is not good. 
it's not going to work. Yeah, it's because just, a trained ear, you can't exactly. hide. You can't hide so, that. So there's a yeah. fine line. And then you have people out there that say, oh, well, you know, if it's overproduced and blah, 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 then, you know, it's just overproduced. It's, listen, there are demo producers out there that don't produce at all. And I don't know why, because real commercials are produced. In fact, they spend a lot of money. Um, my background comes from producing commercials. Yes. So I know what goes into producing a real national spot, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, it's really, really, really it important. Is. You have a demo, but maybe it's time to update. Time How for an update. How do you know? When do you know? It is time to update a demo when A, you're better than you were mm -hmm. when you recorded that specific demo or spots or whatever. Um, uh, here's what I always I always tell people. So, I mean, don't show how good you were. Show how good you are, right? So that's a good reason to update a demo. But check your demo every year, like once a year. Listen to everything and listen for these few things. Number one, is there anything on there that I can do better? Again, don't show how good you were. Show how good you are. If the answer is yes, then maybe redo that spot, mm -hmm. right? Um or another spot that's like that, that's, you know, that you can showcase better skill. Number two, um, is there anything on there that doesn't exist anymore? Is there a product or even a style of read that isn't really popular anymore? And if the answer is yes, get rid of that. Maybe add something to replace. Um, and the other thing is, is if your demo is more than three years old, then you don't need to update your demo. You need a new demo. Yes. Because first of all, if you're not way better three years later, then something is terribly wrong. Um, uh, so I'm going to assume that three years have passed, man, you've been working or auditioning a lot uh, or coaching a lot, and you are just way, way better. I've seen people, and, and, and this is so cool, man. I've seen people that had a demo that was you know three or four five years old, and they just wanted to hang on to it because they they loved it. They, it still sounded good. But stylistically speaking, it wasn't really what it needed to be for today's market. Mm. So they went in and they redid that demo. And immediately after, not only was their, was their agent excited that now they could actually have a tool that they can use for that person to help them, but they immediately started implementing some of the newer styles that were that they were coached on for that new demo into auditions and started booking more mm -hmm. you know and that's how things happen you know it's like once you open up your mind to newer things that are really really happening you start delivering those again adding value giving value uh, uh, things change mm -hmm. so how did you find your way to producing and directing demos, Chuck. Wow. This is a story that not a lot of people know. Should I tell the abridged version or should I? You need to tell the juicy good version. The juicy good version. If okay. people aren't interested, guess what? They've already tuned out. Well, the people that are interested are still like <laughs> eating the popcorn going like, no. So this is gonna take give us... the people what they want. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the people what they want. I'm gonna take us back though. Yes. I'm gonna take us back like, you know, almost 30 years. <laughs> um, because that's when I started doing this. And uh, what had happened was, uh, uh, for those that don't know, I'm, I'm a musician. I'm a guitar player. I'm a singer. I've been in band since I was 13 years old. And that's my passion uh, uh, since I was a little kid. Yes. And so growing up, you know, through my teens and 20s and all that stuff, I was making records. I was making writing music and recording and mixing and engineering and, and doing all that stuff, but on records. So the quality on a record is pretty high standards, right? And so years later, like in my 20s or whatever it was, uh, my best friend um, uh, got a role on a giant animation uh, uh, series. And uh, when he went to Disney and they said, well, you got the role, so you need to go find an agent. Here's the three top agents in town. Go pick one so that we can pay you. So he's like, oh, great. So he went to the three top agents, met with them. He picked one. That agent told him, you're going to need a voiceover demo. Mm -hmm. Can I say the name? I should say the name. Of course. Because he's huge. Jess Harnell. He's my best friend. We've been... <laughs> 
tight since and we were my like chosen little, brother. little kids. We so, love our Jesse. Yeah. So he decided that, that he went with, you know, this giant agency and the agent said, Jess, I can't promote you without a voiceover demo for animation. So get one. He goes, okay, great. Uh, can you give me five demos that you feel are like stellar so that I know what to, what to go by here? And they said, great. They sent them five demos. He brought the demos to me and yes. said, hey, buddy, you have to help me produce <clears throat> an animation demo. And I said, what's that? What the heck is that? <laughs> um, so we listened to these five demos that were supposed to be stellar. And because I'm doing music, I'm thinking, oh, my God. This is horrible. <laughs> I mean, this is this was really bad. What was horrible about it? Just Everything. The, the quality. Yeah. I mean, the editing. Because people were like editing on like splicing tape together. And you can mm. hear like bad edits. And just the music was like really dorky. It's like the, those little CDs <laughs> that you used to buy at Tower Records that had sound effects or, or music <laughs> that you can get for 12 bucks. I mean, it was really bad, right? Yeah. So. You knew you could do better. I, yeah. You and, didn't and know I what you even, were doing, I didn't but you even knew know you what I was do doing. Better. So we did it. We made an animation demo, and Jess took it back to his agent. And his agent at the time said, Wow, this is the best animation demo I have ever heard. Who produced this? And Jess says, Well, that's my buddy Chuck Duran. He's the best. <laughs> so he's done behold, one, and it's amazing. I get a call back from this big giant agency and this agent and says, Chuck, we love what you did for <laughs> Jess. Could you replicate that? Could you do this for some of our, of our other high profile clients? These demos are spectacular. And I said, absolutely. Great. The first guy I'm going to send you is so-and-so and he needs a commercial demo. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. And I said, hey, can you send me five commercial demos that you feel are really, really stellar so that I know what it is that you like. And he goes, absolutely. So, cause I had no idea what the heck I was doing. So he sent those to me. We produced a commercial demo and that's what happened. And then I said to myself, well, I'm already talking to one agent and one agency and asking them what you need to hear specifically. What do you need this demo to be to help your client? Mm -hmm. So I picked up the phone and I, well, I figured out first that there were other agencies in town. Good. So I called okay. them all. And I said, I produced demos for such and such agency um, for all their top clients. And I'd like to offer my services to your clients as well. Do you mind if I come in and talk to you? And they're like, what? Okay. <laughs> so I went in and met with a lot of these agents and let them hear what I did. And they all started referring people. But the, my key element, which I still do today, is that I ask agents, what do you need to hear? What are you sick of hearing? And how can your client's demos be a tool that you could use to help get them more work? Yeah. And I don't produce demos for people's mothers and their friends and coaches and casting directors necessarily. I produce them for what the agents need to hear on those demos. And so that's been going on for 30 years. And by the way, I've asked some of these agents, does anybody else call you to ask you what it is that you need? And they say, no, you're the only one. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, that might so change now. That might change now, yeah. right? It's not a secret though. Yeah. You would do that with any industry. I yes. mean, yes. I, if I want to help you, Shouldn't I know what these people that are going to work with you yes. need from you? Because if I can relay that information, then now you have guns loaded, man. Yeah. You, you're, you're powerful now. And that's it. That, that's, that's how I started. And then after that, it, it just became, you know. You loved it. I loved it. I really yeah. loved it because I was working with people. It was different. It was different in music. I could still bring that high caliber of production and mixing and mastering um, these demos to have them sonically sound like the stuff that was really being produced for television yeah. uh, uh, and, and, and even radio. Um, and, and, and I have to say that in the early days, for me, it was an opportunity, right? It, I looked at it more of like, you know, the money that I can make doing this. Oh, wow, this is so cool. I can make money. And, 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 and as the years progressed, everything shifts from the money to just helping people, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and it became way more gratifying 
when I can say, okay, what changes do I need to make to help these people? Do I need different information from agents in order to be able to help the people that come right. to me? And that's why we have that initial meeting when we have the meeting is because that meeting is all about you and what you want and how I can help you get that. Okay guys, that was part one with the fabulous Chuck Duran. Make sure to come back next week for part two. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow all of us on social. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember, you, you always, always have time for a little, little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little